Dataverse automates a lot of the work of managing data, like primary keys. But say you want to get your data into Dataverse. You have a primary key, but so does Dataverse. How do you connect the two? That's the job of Dataverse alternate keys, and Yasin is going to show how they work on this PowerCat Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Topless on the PowerCat team, and I'm here with my fellow PowerCat, Yasin. Hey, Yasin. Hey, hey, Phil. How are you? I'm okay. Now, uh, everybody watching knows that Dataverse is a cloud-scale database as part of Power Platform, and behind the scenes, every record gets its own unique ID. Yeah. In addition to these primary keys, why do we need alternate keys? What do they do? Yeah. So if we if we just go back uh, if we just go to the screen and you see right uh, that a, a very common scenario for first of all uh, data was data does not live in an isolation or a silo. Sure. It's always yeah. connected to an external system, an external enterprise system. And a lot of uh, a very common scenario would be a citizen developer may want to build a process for their team. However, the data would be coming from an external system. So when that data is pushed from the external system to Dataverse, it needs to start a process. And a very common requirement would be that, hey, how do I link this record to my external system uh, keys that uniquely defines it without you know, making any drastic uh, changes with, uh, as since I don't have access to the external system, so on and so forth. So that is, that is the key reason why this uh, feature is required. And so these keys then, these alternate keys, how do you configure them within Dataverse? So the way you do it is uh, uh, you go to your, uh, your solutions. You would ideally have a solution. Within a solution, you would have tables, right? A mm -hmm. And tables would have uh, uh, columns. So you would go and create your columns the way you create it. And some of those columns would be uh, columns from the external system, right? That uniquely mm -hmm. identifies those uh, those uh, records, right? So you'd go and do your standard stuff. But then if you see, you have relationships, business rules, views, forms, dashboards, charts, and you have something called keys. And this is where this uh, you go and create a key. So now you could go and create a new key or I've just created an existing key. And here you can see, I can give a key name. It will come with this publisher unique name, and then I can select a combination. So just for our, uh, uh, to illustrate the point, I've just created a key with two columns, a service request number and an account. And now these two columns are, will uniquely uh, define the record whenever I do a data import or I do some integration and I try to, uh, uh, and I tell the system that this is the key I want to apply. So because you can't have the original system's key be the primary key, this is a way of basically mirroring that in Dataverse in addition to Dataverse's yes. key. Now yes. I noticed there were far fewer fields in that alternate key dialogue than there were in your table. So there must be some sort of limitation on which fields can be used for this. You could have most of your standard columns that are there, right? So you could have decimals, whole numbers, single line text, a date, time, lookup, and option sets. So you could pretty much use all the common fields that would uh, map your external system uh, schema, and based on that, you could you could create the keys. It's nice seeing lookup in there too. That gives it a lot of power. Yeah. So once you've got these configured, then how do you use them in an import to bring in data from an external system? So now I would uh, move to my application. So ideally, I would have my application. So here I've just created a simple application. And now I'm going to, uh, we have these out of the box capabilities to import the file. So before I import the file, I will just show the CSV file that I have so you can mm -hmm. understand what the schema is. So it's really a simple file. And here I have about seven records. And if you see my last record, service key and account name duplicates with these. So I have some duplicate records and this is my, I have like three duplicate records in this, right? And then so out of my seven records, I have three duplicate records and I have three that are unique. So that's my schema. And here in, and in that spreadsheet, your key is the service request number. So that would be your primary key in your, whatever your external data source is. Yes. So the service request number and the account would be the primary key. And this would uniquely identify the record. So now I'll go and, uh, import my uh, CSV file. And when I import it, I can see 
I have this key that I created. So I'll select that key. I have right. to select this key for it to be applicable. I don't need to do anything else. I'll just use the default. Mm -hmm. And if I have the same name, so if my CSV file has the same names, uh, column names as the uh, data was table schema names, then it will auto map it. Otherwise I have an option to select a field from here to map. And then I will say finish import. So once I say finish import, uh, it would start the import process, right? So this import process would take a couple of minutes to finish and I can track it over here if I want to. So here I can see that it is importing. Uh, I've submitted the request, so this would finish. So now the records have been imported successfully. So I can see the status here, success, failure, so on. So I have everything successful. And if I go back to my app, uh, right, I'll just do this done. And if I reselect my, uh, my view, I'll see that I have uh, four records and uh, and two record uh, the duplicate records did not uh, get effect in fact the last record uh, with this key uh, which is test 8 uh, got uh, updated so how are you seeing enterprises use this feature in most of the cases is uh, where it like i said that you have your your data versus data is not uh, does not sit in a silo it's always integrated with an external system. So it really, this feature really makes it seamless, in my opinion, to link your external system records with your database records. From a citizen development perspective, you know, who are not traditionally IT uh, uh, people right. in an organization, it makes it super easy for them to build apps. That's one. The second thing is, and then from an IT team, if you have access to a traditional IT team, then it also simplifies the effort. So historically, if you would spend about two weeks to figure this thing out, uh, and most of the time would go in in meetings and discussions with an external system uh, team, now you can do this very quickly. So it really uh, accelerates your time to uh, production uh, very fast. So that's how uh, enterprises uh, would use this feature and, and get a lot of value out of it. So this is a really useful feature that's kind of hidden under the covers in Dataverse, and I can see why this would be really powerful for importing data. Where do people go if they want to learn more and try this out? So we have a, 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 a good documentation uh, for these features, and, and here are some additional info as well, just, just for you to uh, keep in mind that you can uh, you know, use 16 columns per key. So you can have a combination of 16 columns to define one key. Sure. You can have uh, max uh, 10 alternate keys and the super useful uh, 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 information is that it automatically creates indexes to enforce nice. uniqueness and then it will optimize your lookup performance. So it's really it, it really makes your uh, your process faster. And I know also, too, in the Power Platform Architecture Series, we have a video on using Azure Data Factory to import records and import related records. It uses alternate keys, too. So another great use of alternate keys if you want to dive deeper into this. Yassine, yeah. thanks, thanks for this overview of alternate keys. It's good talking to you again.